Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, could you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Like, comment, and subscribe, help me out. This would, uh, really helps me make the channel grow and get this information out to you. So today we're gonna go over Mr. Burberry. Yes, I have all three, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this line. So we're gonna start out with the original. Mr. Burberry. Now, Mr. Burberry has top notes of grapefruit, cardamom, tarragon, mint, birch leaf, nutmeg, cedar, and lavender in the mid, and then on the base, sandalwood, guyac wood, vetiver, amberwood, benzoin, and oak moss. Now, from what I get off right off the rip is typically a little bit of that cardamom and grapefruit, and then it's it's still a little bit smoky, but the nutmeg and cedar really stick out. Into the dry down, you the vetiver starts to come up a little bit more. Now, I did spray it on this just a little bit ago. I'm actually picking up birch off the paper. The birch leaf and the mint. The grapefruit. The cardamom's a little bit subdued right now. and the nutmeg. Now, in my mind, this fragrance actually has, and I'll spray some on my hand, it actually has gotten a little bit of hate in the community, so to speak. A lot of people do not like. Now, Joy, Joy from uh, Bangladesh, he likes the Mr. Burberry line, and he's the one that motivated me to give it more of a chance than I did. But I did smell the recent release before I smell any of the other ones because I got such a great deal on it and it smelled so good to my nose. Such an easy fragrance to wear that I bought the whole entire line. Now, I had gotten Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum, uh, just a, a travel, a, a travel uh, sprayer, so I don't have a full bottle presentation of that one. I'm looking forward to wearing this. I This has got a little bit of a smokiness to it. So it's different. It's a blue fragrance that's a little bit unique. I don't know what to think of it, to be honest. I got, I got the grapefruit. I really like grapefruit as a note. The spices in this, the cardamom. I can smell the mint. I'm getting that. Oh, I'm getting a lot of birch leaf right now. It's green. It's very green. And um, so it's kind of like, it's not your quintessential uh, blue fragrance, so to speak. And in the dry down, it's got amber wood. Now, see, Burberry did something different with these fragrances. So what you'll see in this line is you'll see some huge differences uh, between each of the, the flankers to the original. The original's got amber wood. Now I'm starting to pick up the amber wood. It's subtle. It's not like very noticeable. Guyac wood, sandalwood. It's going to be like a, a it's going to dry down probably into a nice creamy little scent. That's dominant. That cedar's dominant, more dominant than I thought it would be. And the birch leaf is just maintaining that greenness throughout. And it's starting to settle in a little bit and the cardamom starting to pop out a little bit more a little bit of the nutmeg and the cedar but i'm getting it, it to me it seems it's, it's kind of cedar dominant at this point and i'm still getting that citrus it's it's actually well blended i i mean when you initially spray it on your skin, it's a little bit like, what the heck is going on here? What is this? Um, obviously, yeah, you let the alcohol smell and all that kind of stuff kind of dissipate a little bit, and then you smell it. But when before it settles down, like it's it's got some weird transitions. And now it's lovely. So it took about five minutes or so. But yeah, this is unique. So it's not your typical blue fragrance 
it, it really isn't. It's uh, it's very unique. It doesn't compete with others, so it's it's kind of like um, your your typical crowd pleaser, and then it's got birch leaf that makes it a little green, and it's got some mint that adds a little bit of a medicinal vibe to it. It's got lavender, but it's not really pronounced lavender. That cedar makes it smell a little bit dated, but I love cedar as a note. And I, I kind of feel it like that vetiver is trying to pop through. It's just, it's curious. It's curious. It's there's a lot, there's a lot going on here, and uh, it's. I don't think a lot of people are wearing this one specifically. I mean, it's not your blue de Chanel. It's it's really different than that. It's safe to wear in the office. I mean, no one's going to complain that you're wearing this. <clears throat> All right, so next one I'm going to go to the Eau de Parfum. Now, I have this travel uh, one right here, Mr. Burberry, and this is the Eau de Parfum. I don't know if you can see that right there, but that's the proof that this is the Eau de Parfum. And top notes, we still have the same top notes. So grapefruit, cardamom, mint, and targon. Um, in the mid, we still have lavender, cedar, and nutmeg. We are missing the birch leaf. So I'm assuming this is going to not have that green vibe that was dominating um, on the one that I sprayed on my left hand. It's really oh, like when you, take, when you go away and you come back, it's almost like you're smelling something different. So these, these fragrances might make very nice transitions. They seem like they're blended nicely and probably are uh, because, heck, the, the same perfumer, uh, Francis Kirk John, is the uh, same one with uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. So definitely some art that goes into making these. I don't know why they've gotten so much hate from the community. Maybe because it's from Burberry. It's an older house and uh, they've been around for a while. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe people just don't understand it because the mix of the notes are just a little bit on the odd side, but they are different. I do enjoy this one. It's, it's going to take a lot more time for me to spend with it, for me to get my final opinion on it. But right now, I, I'm enjoying it. I didn't like it from the initial spray, but I am enjoying it. And I have not really tested it out too much. Now, as far as the Eau de Parfum uh, goes, I have worn it a little bit. And I just didn't like it much. And the girlfriend at the time didn't care for it either. So I wasn't wearing it then. All right. So, again, top note, grapefruit, cardamom, mint, and tarragon, which is the same. Mid is lavender, cedar, nutmeg. We're missing the birch leaf, and the base is patchouli, amber, sandalwood, vetiver, benzoin, and cinnamon. So we drop the amber wood, and we add amber. And we drop the guyac wood, and we add patchouli. And there's no oak moss, but now there's cinnamon. So these are the major differences, and as far as the dominant notes go you're going to be smelling a lot of the patchouli and I'm going to tell you what kind of patchouli because there's different types of patchouli cinnamon cardamom and the grapefruit are dominant all right so right off the start I get a minty cardamom which is kind of strange I think that's what throws people off because cardamom is is and mint aren't, aren't usually notes that are put together. At least from my understanding, because I think that's kind of like what's kind of weird about it. Ooh, I'm actually smelling lavender right now. And the targon is coming out a little bit stronger than I thought it would. Cedar, yeah. It is a little bit woodier to my nose than the original. Uh, 
Uh, seems like that patchouli is more of the dirty, earthy type. So, this one's a little bit skankier. Um, probably one that you would wear if you're going to choose to wear at night um, out with your friends going out or on a date. Um, this is not, this is probably not the one I'd choose to wear at the office. Because if I was going to characterize this one in, in the difference of the original, this is the one that you you might do something naughty with somebody with. Because it is a little bit skanky. And that's a good thing. It's skanky in a good way. It's, it's a... It's a sexy fragrance, but I'm wondering if it's if it's going to make transitions. And it already is. So that mint blast was on the top. You can still say it's subtle mint. It died down. At the initial blast, the mint was kind of clashing with the cardamom. And it did not like what it was throwing at my nose. And the grapefruit was kind of intermingling with that. It just kind of, it was a little bit like, I don't know what to think about that. Now that it's starting to settle down, I'm smelling that cedar lavender mix a little bit and the, the patchouli, which is a little dirty patchouli. Amber, um, super subtle. The amber is so subtle. It's like, it's a dry amber. And I'm, to my nose, the cinnamon hasn't really popped. It has not popped out yet. And the amber is just so, so subtle that it's, uh, I can't really detect it too much, but I, it's a dry amber. This is, a, this is a good one. So I'm not sure. This one gets a lot of hate from the community too, and I'm not exactly sure why. I'm actually open to potentially buying a full-size presentation of that one. And I did spray it on this piece of paper, see if it smells any different off paper than it is in my hand. And it does. Kind of reminds me a little bit of an Isi Miyake fragrance. <sighs> Definitely a little bit darker because of that patchouli. And um, they're unique. So the last one is Burberry, Mr. Burberry Indigo. And I got a big bottle of this. So this is the original size bottle, this is the big bottle. It is definitely bigger. And yes, there's fingerprints all over it because I touched my bottles. But this one right here, this one really gets the citrus and the mint down. I'm telling you, uh, I'm loving it. So the mint is not in the top notes on this one. This is probably the most different out of the two. Uh, in the top, we have lemon, rosemary, bergamot, and grapefruit. So we still have grapefruit in there, but lemon, rosemary, and bergamot are all different. Now I'm thinking the same citrus, similar citrus vibes gonna be getting, we're gonna get that from the lemon and the bergamot. And then in the mid we have violet, which is new. And then we have mint, which used to be in the top, but now it's in the mid. Hedion, which wasn't in the other two. Sage, also not in the other two. Tea and water notes. So the only similarity in the mid is mint, and that was in the top on the other ones. In the base, we have oak moss again, which is similar to the original. Amber, which is similar to the eau de parfum. And something new, ISO Super E. So that's what makes it interesting. And in the dry down, it's ISO Super E more dominant. But for whatever reason, the characteristics stay with the violet and the mint and the lemon and the rosemary. That's where the majority of it is coming from. And yes, I did not mention it, but grapefruit is still in the top along with the uh, lemon, rosemary, and bergamot. So there is similarity there. Um, I'm gonna have to spray it a little bit higher on my arm. And it's gonna be a little bit different to dry it down. So I'm already smelling the mint. 
the lemon. Okay. Cardamom is, uh, well, there's no cardamom in this one. I'm not, yeah, because it's not even existent. I am, I'm getting a, like, the violet, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of violet, a lot more violet in it than I thought would be there, but I'm definitely getting the violet and the mint together. And the violet and the mint have a nice synergistic effect, I think, on the fragrance. Now, the lemon, I'm not really detecting a strong lemon. It's kind of a subtle lemon that's kind of intermingling with the rosemary, so it gives you that like nice little green scent. And then you also have sage in the mid, tea in the mid, and I, I am picking up on that tea vibe a little bit. And obviously, it is, the aquatic water notes are in there as well. I'm definitely getting that. I am, I like this one quite a bit. I've worn it. Um, I've had six plus hours of longevity with it. I have refreshed it. And I, I refresh it just because I really dig the citrus and the mint, especially the mint note. <sighs> but it's good. It's an easy one to wear. It's so inoffensive. It's like no one's going to hate this fragrance. All right. So there you have it. I've checked all three. Got the original right here. Got Indigo right there. The Eau de Parfum right here. Got the Amber. Got the Amber and the Cinnamon popped out on this one. The Patchouli took a little bit of a step back, but it's that dirty Amber Cinnamon smell. And when I smell this one, it kind of it makes me nose blind to the other two. Because this one's darker. All right, so here's my final verdict. So. Overall, if you want a safe fragrance, if you want something to wear at the office, if you want something to wear casual, if you if you want something to just grab and go, your best bet is probably going to be uh, Burberry Indigo, uh, especially in the spring and the summer months on those hotter days. In the cooler days or at night, uh, if you want something safe, I would say Mr. Burberry, the original. It's a little bit smoky, so there's a little bit of a darkness to it, but... Uh, if you want something a little bit dirty, a little bit skanky, <laughs> got that amber, that cinnamon, um, got that little dirty, sexy vibe, I would go with the Eau de Parfum. So which one do I like the best? Right now, after comparing them all, I thought I would like Indigo the best, I really did. And I still like it quite a bit. I'm looking forward to wearing it in the summertime. I'm looking forward to wearing Mr. Burberry, the, the original one, in, in the summertime as well. The only thing that kind of overshadows these and maybe why they get so much hate in the community, I think, is because there's so many other things out there that people reach for. Um, but these are unique in my mind. They have taken the original... And with the flankers, they have changed them enough to where they're basically nice differentiating twists on the original. And uh, they're, even though this one is, you know, a very, like, it's, you're smelling the DNA in other fragrances. I really like the take that uh, Francis Kirk Jean has taken on this particular line of fragrances. And I think it they're underrated in my opinion. So give Mr. Burberry a shot. You might actually like it. I would suggest get smaller bottles to test them out or to get samples if you can. They are relatively cheap on discounters and if you find them at the rack stores, they are also rather inexpensive. So you can definitely get a hold of them, especially Bur Mr. Burberry Indigo. Um, I got this large bottle for uh, $50 at uh, Marshalls or Ross. I, I can't remember which one it was. But I got it and I just, I had no intention on getting Mr. Burberry because I, because the ex-girlfriend did not like this one. So I wasn't planning on getting any of them. And then I watched a video 
uh, by Joy in Bangladesh, and I got interested in this one after I got Burberry Indigo. So there I have it. I do have all three. However, I don't have a full-size presentation of Eau de Parfum. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get a bit full bottle presentation. I guess when this one runs out and I have more testing done, I might be more open to it. But as of right now, I have got a travel size indigo and a big one. So if I do go on a trip, I can wear indigo when I go. And uh, I do sometimes go to tropical locations when I vacation. So that small one's probably gonna go with me. Um, but I do have a lot of nice summer fragrances that I can wear. And now let me know what you think in the comments below, what you think about Mr. Burberry, what has been your experiences with it. Do you think it's an underrated fragrance or do you think it's worth mentioning and worth talking about? All right, see you soon. Take care, guys.